So, that's it, eh? 2021-2022 has come to an end. And just like a similar Canucks season we had just had, it comes to an end in a shootout in Edmonton. This one, of course, going up against an Oilers squad that does not feature two of the best players in the entire gosh darn world. They sat out their primary goaltender Mike Smith, they sat out Connor McDavid, they sat out Leon Dreisaitl, because they're preparing for the playoffs and they don't want to get their guys in any position that might be a little bit too vulnerable, plus the fact that Mike Smith is 40 years old. They went with Koskinen, they played the rest of their lineup, they called up some guys, they had a different kind of look. Nevertheless, though, they still are able to beat the Vancouver Canucks, who have been suffering from their own injuries the entire year. This season, of course, has not been kind to them when it comes to man games missed and testing positive, so losing out on games here and there. But the team that was iced today was a lot different from the team that was iced in the beginning of the season. No Horvat, no Pearson, no Hoaglander, no Demko, no Halak, the list goes on and on and on and on and on. This team was not really the same. And I'm not trying to make excuses, they still lost, it's just, when you holistically take a look at the 2021-2022 season, you still have to remind yourself, okay, there were so many things that went on from September and October until now that the identity, the motivations, the path of the Vancouver Canucks, completely different. This might have been JT Miller's last game as a Vancouver Canuck. This might have been Brock Besser's last game as a Vancouver Canuck. This might have been Tyler Myers' last game as a Vancouver Canuck. There are a whole bunch of maybes, but when it comes to the way things went down, it is indeed a 3-2 shootout loss in Edmonton, as we said, and I didn't record any notes. Not because I didn't watch the game. I kind of use this game as an opportunity to catch up with my mom and just talk about some very interesting life details. But this was just one of those games where I was like, you know what? I want to chill out on the notes because I feel like the notes can sometimes get overwhelming when you're trying to verbalize them in an audio content form. So I might just want to speak from the heart a little bit this time. Just talk about the game, how I felt about it, how I felt about the season, how I felt when watching this overall showcase here, because I've been saying it the past few weeks. I've been saying it in the past 24 hours. This game was pretty much just me with the eagle eye visioned goggles, zooming in on JT Miller every single shift he had. Now, I'm no Will Scouching or NHL draft scouting person. I don't track players actively when I watch hockey games. But for Miller, I felt like I was doing it in this one because every time the guy had a shift, I was like, okay, move to the middle. You've got some space there. Okay, he's got the puck. Okay, he's got a lane on the side. Come on, make the pass. Oh, it didn't work. And I was just kind of calling it out in my head as I see it. You know, Miller, 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 Miller on the wall. Please show us who is the best 100-point scorer of them all because he came into this game at 98 points. And to be fair, he scored the first goal of the game in the first period. It was a goal assisted by Connor Garland, who sets up Brad Hunt on the side of the slot there. He throws it across for Miller, who one-times it in for his 32nd goal on the year and his 99th point of the year. And I was like, oh boy, he's got 40 minutes to get one more point to get to 100 and put his name alongside of... Vancouver Canucks greats like the Sedins and Naslin and Bure and, I guess, Alex McGillney too, who was a lot better as a Sabre, but he still was good as a Vancouver Canuck. Miller had 40 minutes to get himself one more point, and unfortunately, it did not happen. The Canucks, in the first period, controlled most of the play, had some really good scoring opportunities pretty much throughout the lineup, and Koskinen was forced to make some strong saves up front. The second period was a lot more just back and forth. It was 0-0, the score of that period. We head into the third with a 1-0 Vancouver lead. Miller still with the only goal of the game. And the third period gets off to a pretty quick start because right away it's Brett Kulak. Yeah, a lot of Canadians fans that are viewers of my channel, you understand how much I adore Brett Kulak and everything that he has done for the Montreal Canadiens, but... He went out there and scored on a screenshot. Spencer Martin was not able to see it because I believe it was OEL who didn't body the guy off in front of the goaltender. So Martin's not able to see it. It's 1-1. But the Vancouver Canucks respond back very quickly as Quinn Hughes starts himself a rush where he forces it into the offensive zone and he drops it down for Connor Garland who comes right in. He takes a snapshot on the left side and it squeaks underneath the blocker of Miko Koskinen giving the Vancouver Canucks yet another one goal lead. 
Quinn Hughes has 60 assists on the year. Luke Shen also assisted on this goal, too, because he was the guy that sent it over to Hughes in the Canucks defensive zone. I was kind of pulling from Miller because he was on the ice when this play happened. He just didn't touch the puck because he was in front of the bench instead of being in a prime play facilitating position. And then you give it a few more minutes, and the Oilers are able to tie it up once again. It's Tyson Berry off of another screened Spencer Martin, who gets it right by, through the legs of, I believe, Josh Archibald and Tyler Myers, and then past the blocker of Spencer Martin. The only two goals that beat him today were ones that he couldn't see. So, he actually had himself a great showcase, all things considered. And, even if you just take a look at the tape, okay, look at the saves he made, take a look at the overall caliber of offense the Oilers were able to do without McDavid and without Dreisaitl, you still had what was a very strong game for Spencer Martin, who has yet to concede a point in his entire Vancouver Canucks NHL tenure. He has only lost in overtimes or shootouts, so he's been getting points for Vancouver. He made 31 saves here on 33 total shots. And ultimately, it goes into OT. This is where I was kind of paying attention to Miller even more because, hey, it's three on three. You don't have McDavid. You don't have Dreisaitl. This is probably going to be a lot easier for Vancouver to get some offense, right? And they started out with Miller, Garland, and Quinn Hughes. And to be fair, they did really well. Quinn Hughes had a beautiful centering backdoor play for JT Miller that gets stopped right on the doorstep by Miko Koskinen's right pad. Miller, had he just shoved the puck a little bit higher, could have gotten his 100th point on the season in overtime. But it didn't happen, because give it a few more shifts, there's more rotations going around, there are a few other plays that Miller does that are kind of questionable. There was, even in the third period, there was that pass he did to nobody in the defensive zone. But in overtime, you had yourself some pretty gasping moments as well, where Quinn Hughes had to stop a centering pass with his skate because he had no stick. I don't know if it was a pass or if it was a shot, but he was able to deflect the puck over the glass. It was a very intense overtime period, especially towards the very end where Connor Garland and I believe Miller had an opportunity to come in two-on-one, but Miller stopped up at the line for some reason and he didn't take the chance. Ultimately, he ends off this year with 32 goals and 67 assists for 99 total points. It's cool because Miller rocks 99, and the Oilers ended up winning in a shootout because he had so many opportunities for everybody. And it's kind of funny, kind of poetic in a way, too, when you think about what happened in the shootout. Nugent Hopkins, he missed it. Pedersen got saved. Vander Kane got saved. Miller got saved. He was a little bit too slow on that one. Kyler Yamamoto just straight up mishandled the puck and played it into the corner. Brock Besser got saved, Broussard got saved, Pod Colson got saved, Barry just missed it, Connor Garland was saved as well. It was only Devin Shore, the 11th shooter of the night, who was able to force Martin to commit a little bit earlier to backing into his net, which he was able to expose by cutting across to the far side. And then the last play of the season is the strangest one to me. It's the sixth round of the shootout. You don't have Miller anymore. You don't have Pedersen or Besser or Garland. Obviously, there's no more Horvat and Hoaglander and all them. Why do you put OEL, Bruce? Like, I'm sorry. I'm very happy to see that Bruce There It Is is going to come back for next season. We even saw Pud goals and say that Bruce There It Is is his favorite English word. But why is it OEL in the shootout and not a guy like Hughes or a guy like, I don't know, who the heck else would have been available in this spot? You get what I mean. Out of all the players to choose in the shootout, you go OEL in the sixth round? Ay ay ay. Quinn Hughes was still there. He even had Nick Patan, who you tried to give an opportunity to in the last shootout, who was there too. But at the end of the day, the Canucks end up losing 3-2 in a shootout. JT Miller does not get two points. He gets one. So he ends off the season with 99 points in 80 games played. Had he just played those last two games, man, he would have had 100. Ah, <sighs> what's the worst thing I could say? Things are better if I stay so long, and good night, Vancouver. That has been your 2021-2022 season. The big question is now, where the heck do we go from here? I kind of want to start making more streams, because we hadn't streamed ever since the draft of last year, so this, with the playoffs coming along, is our new opportunity to get those streams up and running. It's going to be fun for me. Hopefully, it's going to be fun for me. I mean, I do have to commit like two, three hours in the middle of my day every time to do those, but who really knows how exactly the schedule is going to go? We'll wait and see because, you know, it all relies on the playoff schedule and everything, and that's not necessarily fully released yet. But let me know in the comments are your thoughts about the Canucks versus the Oilers, the last game of the season. It is a 3-2 shootout loss. 
JT Miller had a point, but not all of them, or not the amount of points that we wanted. OEL went in the shootout, and there were a few other plays that were noteworthy. I just kind of forgot because I wasn't recording any notes. Let me know in the comments like your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Rishra Trolls 99. And bye.